everybody. This is Heather Zerke. I'm general counsel for the Cleveland Metropolitan Bar Association. Welcome to our program, Understanding Bar Admissions During a Health Crisis. And I am so glad to be joined by Gina White Palmer, who's joining from Columbus. Hi, Gina. Hi, Heather. Thank you for being here. We decided just about two days ago at the CMBA that we needed to do this program. We were getting questions from our members, from Bar Admissions Committee members who are trying to do character and fitness interviews when there's a stay at home order. We're hearing from 3Ls who wanna know if the July exam is still on, from people who just took the February exam, they wanna know if their results are gonna be delayed. So we knew that this was a program that we needed to do. Um, and at last count, we had over 200 people register for this program. So thanks to everyone who is joining us. We know that you're joining us from as far away as Kentucky. We've got people in Cincinnati and Dayton and Columbus and here in Cleveland. Thank you all so much for joining us. I wanna give a shout out to the members of our Bar Admissions Committee, all 95 of you. Thank you for what you do. But I wanna talk directly to the future lawyers, the people that we're gonna be welcoming soon to the profession. We want you to know that your bar association cares about you. We know that you're worried. Um, we went right to the source by bringing Gina White Palmer into the conversation today. Gina doesn't have all of the answers, but we're going to tell you what's true today. We're going to address some of the rumors that are floating around. And please know that we're going to continue to keep you up to date as things change. So before um, we begin, let me tell you a little bit about my friend, Gina White Palmer. Gina is the director of the Attorney Services Division at the Supreme Court of Ohio, which includes the Office of Bar Admissions and the Office of Attorney Services. Prior to joining the Supreme Court in 2017, she spent 18 years as a magistrate for the Franklin County Domestic Relations and Juvenile Court. Gina currently serves as secretary of the Board of Commissioners on Character and Fitness and the Commission on Continuing Legal Education. She also serves on the National Conference of Bar Examiners Character and Fitness Committee. And in her spare time, she's an avid runner. She has even qualified to run the Boston Marathon and the New York City Marathon in 2020. Um, when Gina and I met um, just a few years ago, we were at the American Bar Association's Unauthorized Practice of Law School in Chicago. So Gina and I have known each other for about three years. We saw Hamilton together. And I'm thinking of my favorite song from Hamilton, The World Turned Upside Down. Yeah. That's what the world feels like right now. And I know that things are crazy in the bar admissions world. Um, deadlines are coming up. Law students are uh, under the stay at home order and they're trying to finish school and exam deadlines are looming. So talk to us first about what the bar admissions office has done about some of those deadlines. Sure. Um, you know, it's only been a short time since this emergency started. Um, I feel like I've lived a year in the last week. Um, but I do fully understand the anxiety and the concern being felt um, by everyone. Uh, my immediate first priority was, of course, my staff in both offices, uh, making sure they were safe and that we could figure out processes for telecommuting uh, when both offices, as the Office of Bar Admissions and the Office of Attorney Services, um, so that they could, when both of those offices pretty much only maintain paper files, it really made it a challenge, but we've got that worked out. Uh, the next thing we did was we looked at the deadlines that were coming up uh, and Chief Justice O'Connor has moved the April 1st bar application deadline to take the July bar exam to April 15th. We have agreed to allow payment by personal check um, related to that application. Um, currently you can only um, well, not currently, prior, you could only do it by cashier's check or a money order. Um, and we know that most people can send um, an online check directly from their bank account. It'll arrive separately from your application. So we ask that you please make a note on your application that it's being sent that way uh, so that we can put two and two together. Um, you can also put identifying information in when you order the check. Um, and so uh, when you're sending it to, if you could always also be sure to include the Office of Bar Admissions um, in the address um, that you're having the check mailed to. 
Uh, the next is the notary requirement. Uh, the bar app, and there's a separate form about that you're over 21, that you've read the rules um, of professional conduct, uh, that you have not committed the unauthorized practice of law. Those two forms have to be notarized. Although we're not waiving the notary requirement, I will accept an application as timely, provided that a signed, those signed documents are included and that you supplement it prior to being allowed to sit for the bar exam. Um, and also we have uh, moved um, care, some character and fitness hearings um, that were already scheduled. Um, understand the office and the, um, and the court itself remains open. Um, we're an essential function. And just like the Board of Professional Conduct hearing, the character and fitness hearings are seen as a necessity and they will continue to go forward. Although we've recommended that any of the panel chairs, if time permits, you can get them scheduled, that we go ahead and, and, and move them um, to a little later in the, in the year. Um, we're also trying to have as much of those hearings to be conducted um, through electronic means, so only necessary parties are here. And if you're involved in one of those, you need to talk to either your attorney or the panel chair um, about your particular hearing. We are also um, approved, the um, Board of Commissioners on Character Fitness approved that the interviews uh, being done by the Bar Associations for Character and Fitness can be done on a temporary basis tele, um, through some kind of telemeans, either like this, like a go-to meeting, or through even um, FaceTime if, if you need to, but the requirement is that both, um, that all parties can see one another during the interview. Mm -hmm. But those are the immediate changes that have been made. Mm -hmm. Those are really good uh, practical steps that the board and the court took. We were really glad as a bar association that uh, the board and the court took such swift action um, to make those accommodations. We didn't know if interviews would have to be postponed way into the future, which um, would delay the character and fitness investigative process. That wouldn't have been good. Um, and we have received questions, you know, in my um, 15 years with the Bar Association over the years, our members have uh, reached out to me. We have an applicant that's overseas or we have somebody that's out of state. Couldn't we just do the interview by Skype? You know, isn't it the same thing? Um, and so our members are probably wondering, is this going to be a permanent change? Will they going forward be able to continue to do interviews by video conference? Uh, the answer is no. Um, the board um, met in February and actually looked at that issue completely unrelated uh, to the coronavirus or anything. Um, and they decided that a personal interview um, means that you're actually present in each other's, um, uh, with each other in a room physically present. Um, and we had a, uh, I know that you participated today, Heather, uh, but we actually did a webinar with the chair of the board of uh, character and fitness. And he explained that this was a temporary move that the board had unanimously voted uh, to not allow um, Skype interviews, how you just don't get the same um, interaction. Um, that's not to say that there won't be um, some specific situation where um, as a, a one-off, I'll call it, um, that we sometimes allow that if, if there's some situation that would really require it. Um, but typically, um, and going forward after this is um, all over, um, they will not be allowed to be done that way. All right. Well, thanks for that clarification. And you're right. I did participate in the webinar this afternoon, a training program for bar admissions committee members across the state. It was terrific training. Thank you for pulling double duty today and doing two bar admissions programs. <laughs> you mentioned earlier about your staff and the safety of your staff. Um, and you have terrific people that work with you at the Bar Admissions Office. They're always so helpful, very responsive to questions from us and from applicants. And we never hesitate to tell law students and bar applicants, just call the Bar Admissions Office. If you have a question, you have a concern, just reach out to them. What should we tell them today? Who is in the office? Is anybody in the office? So we're working on a very small staff and we're asking that um, during this crisis that instead of calling the office that you send an email. We are monitoring uh, the emails. The staff that's in the office is here because we are such a paper-based process and so we're making copies. We're preparing things to take home. We're uploading and scanning documents. So we would prefer that you um, send an email with any question that you have to bar admissions. That's admissions with an S 
um, at sc.ohio.gov. Um, and I'll repeat it, that's bar admissions at sc.ohio.gov. Um, as far as what we're doing in the office, you know, we work off of deadlines. So now we're looking at what's the next thing we have to look at. And you mentioned in your opening about that applicants who've just recently taken the February 2020 exam. Um, the grades are, we've been getting the grades back from the readers. And what we're doing now is we have to take those grades, we have to compile them. Um, we also got the grades back from the NCBE for the MEE. Um, and then we, after we compile them, we have to send them to the psychometrician that we use uh, for him to do his magic. And then we have to send back to the bar examiners those applicants that were within one point of um, passing so that they can do regrades. And then we have to follow the process all over again. And once again, this has always been traditionally a, a pretty much paper process. Uh, so we're coming in and trying to work out ways to compile that information and send it into a timeline. We have every intention of releasing results exactly as we planned on May 1st. Uh, we will put the, um, the uh, results in the mail on April 30th and they can call and start checking on May 1st as planned. Um, so um, then the next thing we have to deal with is what are we going to do about the May 11th bar admission ceremony? Um, I know everyone's nervous about the July exam, but I have to worry about this, you know, ceremony uh, coming up. So right now we're trying to find a different process and, and different proposals in order to get um, the successful applicants from the February 2020 exam um, to get them sworn in. And that's the next, the, the next thing. All right, I know that was a big question for some of the folks that are tuning in this afternoon. So I hope everybody heard that. If you took the February exam, you are on track to get your results on time. So that is a piece of good news today. Absolutely. Um, and I forgot to say at the beginning that um, we are welcoming your questions. So please submit your questions to us through Zoom. We also have somebody monitoring your questions on Facebook. So while we have Gina here on the line, please send us your questions um, and we will get to as many of those as we can this afternoon in our limited time. Um, one question that came in, Gina, early, and we love early birds, a uh, question came in from a University of Cincinnati student um, who showed some real initiative. Thank you for reaching out to us early um, and asked about some of the rumors that are um, circulating about alternatives to the bar exam. And I know, Gina, that you are familiar with this white paper that has been published by 11 law professors. Um, they would like to see some alternatives to um, the traditional bar exam. They really want to see some of those things implemented right away. So some of the things that they're proposing in their white paper, um, there were six different things. One is just postpone the exam. Another alternative, offer it online. Um, number three is administer the exam to small groups of 10. Um, one of the more controversial options is the diploma privilege, where you just let everybody in as long as they graduated from an ABA accredited law school. Then there's the diploma privilege plus, which lets everybody in and then they do some CLE. Um, or let everybody in and then they are supervised by practicing lawyers in their first year or so of practice. So I just saw this headline today in Law 360 about this white paper. It's definitely making the rounds and people are talking about it. What has um, Ohio said about this white paper? Are any of these things a possibility in Ohio? Okay, so Ohio hasn't said um, anything um, about um, this uh, no decisions have been made. Um, we're working with the NCBE and the other jurisdictions related to the July bar exam. Uh, we simply do not know yet. I know that it feels like it's been a year, but it's only been a week or two uh, since this crisis began. Um, and so all the jurisdictions are looking to protect the candidate's safety and at the same time ensure competent people are admitted to practice law to protect the public. Um, so traditionally, graduating from an ABA law school and passing a bar exam um, have been seen as the important requirements to become a fully licensed attorney. At this point in time, absolutely nothing is, is off the table. Um, the newest news from today that I'm sure a lot of people know um, is that this morning the NCBE announced that it will decide on May 5th whether they will deploy a, a bar exam for July. 
of 2020. Um, and they're going to do that based upon the input they get from the jurisdiction, um, all the jurisdictions as to whether or not we will be able to put on uh, one, that whether we'll be able to host one in July. Um, the NCBE does have a contingency plan, and that is for a fall exam. And right now, the date they were uh, proposing is September 29th and 30th. Um, and this would be even if the NCBE deploys an exam in July for those jurisdictions who uh, did not host a July exam. They would pr propose they would have a second exam, which would be different for September. Um, you know, like I said, it's a completely different test. So uh, those, if they deploy one for July, the jurisdictions that can host in July would host in July. If you couldn't host in July, you could host this uh, September 29th and 30th. Um, and the NCBE is also looking at the possibility that if no jurisdictions hosts for July, where they just determine that there's not enough jurisdictions who can, can do July to deploy a July exam, that they'll be looking at possibly two dates in the fall. Um, we simply do not have any answers. We're, we're, we're researching you know, the possible um, locations and venues and what's uh, plausible in, in, in our jurisdiction. Um, also, at this whole time that this is all going on, we're trying to transition to the uniform bar exam. Um, so we have rules that are out for comment. Um, we are in the middle of drafting the Ohio component, uh, which is a um, monumental task. Um, I think we have uh, like 200 pages, if not more, of, of outlines that are being revised and, um, and, and questions we need to put together. And we're still changing all of our internal processes. And there, there's just a lot going on right now. But I assure you that we're working on it. Um, our charge is to ensure that competent people with the requisite character and fitness are admitted to practice law. Um, and no emergency rids us of that duty. Um, so we're trying to marry all of, uh, you know, all of that in, in, into one thing and safety and competency. Um, but we all keep, need to keep in our mind that being an attorney is not a job. It is profession. If you're a prosecutor, that's your job. Um, but your profession is being an attorney. And so um, all of these rules and the continuing legal education that you have to do afterwards are all geared towards what's the best way to do that. And as I said, nothing is off the table at this point. Mm -hmm. And Gina, I think that that is a great reminder for, for all of us and for everybody that's tuning in is that this, it's not a job, that it's a profession. I love how you said that. Um, and I hope for the people that are listening and who are discouraged, um, you know, you're going to get there. We know we're going to be welcoming, welcoming you into the profession. Um, so just sit tight. And Gina, there was a lot that you just said in that last answer. So um, yeah, we don't well, I, yeah, I'm really hoping I admit I personally administer the large exam. The July exam will have anywhere between 800 and 1100 um, people taking it. Um, I personally administer that. Um, I also am one of the people, I say the names of the ceremony, and I really hope to say everybody's name at the bar admission ceremony as they come up. Um, I hope to mispronounce it. I, I work very hard, though, to try to pronounce the names correctly. Uh, but I fully, fully understand how, how anxious every, everybody feels. Um, we feel it, too. Um, we're working 12-hour days in the office, um, and we, you know, if in our ideal world, the July bar exam would go on exactly as planned. Mm -hmm. Well, the, and I'm glad that you said that because question, questions are beginning to come in from law students, um, definitely from some anxious bar uh, applicants who are really looking for reassurance that this July bar exam is going to go forward. And I understand that at this point, Gina, we hope so, that that's what you're working toward, but we just don't know yet. Um, but one of the questions that just came in is if the July exam is going forward, um, do we know where that's gonna take place? Sure, um, it would be at the Roberts Center. Okay. In Wilmington. In Wilmington. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and we haven't sent out information to the schools um, on like release of the room block. Um, the room blocks blocks. So you, you, you should not be able to uh, call up and get a reservation. Um, if you do that, um, you, it might be um, before the block is open. It could be um, they could delete it afterwards. Um, so until the room block is opened, uh, we typically do not have the room block open until after the release of results um, to put 
um, any unsuccessful candidate for the February exam on equal footing um, with other candidates um, as far as getting into the room block. Um, but right now we are looking at the Roberts Center in Wilmington for July. Okay. Another question that's coming in, um, I'm seeing certainly a theme. Law students are very concerned about the July exam being postponed or delayed. Um, and so do we have any kind of a timeline when we know that a decision will be made about the July exam because students are taking bar exam courses and probably taking out some loans for this period of time when they're going to be studying. Um, so do we know when we can expect an answer? Um, not exactly. Um, each jurisdiction has to make their own decision. Um, but as I said earlier, and I know I provided a lot of information, the NCBE will announce on May 5th, um, thereabouts, I think she said on May 5th, um, whether or not they will even deploy a July exam. So based on input that they have from the jurisdictions, if they decide on May 5th that they're not going to deploy an exam, um, then that would be a definitive answer. Um, it's hard. We don't know what the status of everything is going to be on, um, in July. So um, decisions will have to be, be made and they won't be made by me. Um, they're gonna have to be made by uh, the justices of our court and we're gonna have to see how things progress um, in the month of April and what other alternatives we can come up with uh, related to the bar exam. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, Gina. It sounds like maybe a decision will come around graduation time for folks that are three L's. And it, it is, it, you know, of course it is possible that they deploy an exam, but we're unable to host one in Ohio. Um, I just simply don't know. I wish I knew um, with all the, and you know, I, I know that I'm not in the same situation that you are, um, you know, the applicant, um, but we're trying to plan, you know, the office and, and, you know, trying to deploy the UBE and, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about finding a place to host the exam if, if it's not done that day. I mean, there's just a lot of work to do, but we're going to do everything in our power to have an exam. Uh, but the decision won't be mine to make. All right. Well, thanks, Gina. Thanks for all of your efforts in this regard to um, try to make sure that we have a July exam, if at all possible. Question that just came in um, was about a character and fitness interview that was canceled. Um, this applicant is asking, should she reach out to the interviewers about rescheduling? And I'm happy to respond to that question if that is um, somebody who is local in Cleveland, but I think it's probably true wherever you are. You should certainly feel free to reach back out to uh, whoever was going to interview you to see about rescheduling that uh, interview because it could happen now by video conference. So it may be that the lawyer who has your application doesn't have that capability. And if that's the case, you could see if that application could be assigned to somebody else who could do the interview by video conference. Um, but certainly let's definitely keep keep the ball rolling. And if you're not hearing from uh, an admissions committee, definitely take that initiative and reach out, have that interview scheduled. Um, Gina, for, um, for all of the law students that are anxious right now, um, and I know I can remember being in their shoes a long time ago when I was waiting to take the bar exam. Um, I was not somebody that had a job guaranteed when I got out of law school. Nobody was going to hire me until I passed the bar exam and proved myself. So really everything was hanging on that exam. And for these students who are maybe in the same situation that I was in a long time ago, um, what do you say to them uh, when they're so nervous? All they want to do is take the test and they're not even sure that, that they're going to have that opportunity right away in July. Well, the first thing I would, I would tell them is what, what I tell, I've got teen, I'm, my daughter starting law school in, in, the, in the fall um, and both my kids are college age. In their entire life, I've always told them 
there are certain things that you can't control and you can stress about those things and worry about those things, but maybe you can concentrate on what you can control. Um, you can finish up your last year of law school and, and do everything um, that you can to get good grades, to maintain your health. Um, and, and this is one of those things that might be out of your control. Um, but I will assure you um, that we understand the anxiety that you're feeling um, and, and, and how much this is weighing on you. Um, and it's weighing on us too. And you're not alone. Um, this is every law student that's graduating in the class of 2020 or someone who's taken a previous bar exam who is not successful, who is hoping to take that bar exam or hoping to take the UBE hoping to move um, to a different state and take their bar exam. There's a lot of people um, that, that are in this same boat. And there are a lot of people much smarter than me um, throughout this entire country that are looking at the issue and collaborating and trying to come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that, Gina. We're getting, I've seen a couple more questions from uh, some law students. It sounds like they may have deferred. They were waiting to take this UBE in July and are, I think, particularly frustrated um, that there may be a delay. So we understand it at this point that your That's information it. is limited. Yeah. I understand why that, you know, why that decision would have been made. I feel terrible for everybody. Well, I think we, we are just about uh, to the 430 mark and so I know that questions are continuing to come in and I regret that we're not going to be able to get to all of the questions this afternoon so um, let me just encourage those who are tuning in and who still have questions um, you can reach out to me at the CMBA you can reach out to Gina's staff via email that's preferred um, definitely reach out to them with your questions they're continuing to work and to be responsive to all of you um, and know that we at the CNBA are going to continue to keep you updated as we get more information from the court. So Gina, thank you again for joining us this afternoon for all of your hard work um, at the court. We appreciate you so much. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you too. And good luck to everybody. Thank you, Gina.